हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड फॉलोअर्स हाउ आर यू ऑल डूइंग वेलकम टू कैप्टन नेहा ठाकरे एविशन अकेडमी चैनल एंड दिस इज कैप्टन नेहा ठाकरे ऑन एबस 320 ट्वेंटी हाउ इज यूर लॉकडाउन गोइंग ऑन आई होप यू आर डूइंग फाइन इन टूडेज मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मेटार दैट इज मेट्रोलॉजिकल एरोड्रोम रिपोर्ट वाई डू वी नीड दिस मेटार इट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू असेस द वेदर एट द प्लेस ऑफ डिपार्चर एज वेल एज बिफोर लैंडिंग to assess the weather at the place of destination in fact before departure itself you will check all the forecast for destination and its alternate so that you know what weather you will be expecting at the place of destination but that taf that is terminal aerodrome forecast we are going to study in the next module so in today's module it is only metar what all things does it consist of that we are going to study and the details of every aspect of metar we will be looking at now when you see metar it is issued either every half an hour or one hour depending upon the meteorological aerodrome office and this metar will consist of the place so aerodrome name will be given then we will see the date and the time of issue is given to you then you will see wind direction and wind speed then you will see visibility then this visibility is because of what weather so weather you will be seeing then afterwards you will see the cloud layers so there could be maximum of 3 and if cb is there then fourth cloud layer then you will have temperature and dew point and qnh and the last one will be trend forecast or landing forecast let's get started with this the very first one station name this is the icao code for every airport and this is a four letter code the second one that is date it is given in first of all you have first two letters which will signify the date and the last four letters will signify the time that is in utc you have to convert it into your local time or standard time when was that metar issued then the third one is wind this will have wind speed and wind direction out of the five numbers the first three will signify wind direction and the last two will signify wind speed and this could be given in knots that is in india it could be given in miles per hour also or in kilometers per hour wind direction is the direction from where the wind would blow and that is with respect to true north in case of metar whereas in it is it is there with respect to magnetic north so it is has got the information which is there in metar as well as some additional information here for bangalore it is vrb03 so that means wind is variable for three knots if you see calm wind then calm wind will be mentioned as 00000 kt that means there is no direction no wind speed so that's a calm wind that's less than 1 knot if you can see for chennai 30010 gusting to 20 knots gust is sudden increase in wind speed by 10 knots or more that happens in few seconds and it is a very local phenomena so that is a gust so that will give a pilot an intimation in advance that the wind is gusty and you have to have more energy and control over the aircraft at the time of landing then whenever wind direction changes by more than 60 degrees up to 180 degrees then it will be mentioned as v that means variable wind so in case of singapore you can see 320v070 that means wind is variable from 320 direction to 070 direction so here 70 plus 40 that means the wind is changing by 110 degrees then whenever wind speed is more than 100 knots which is really really high for any aircraft limitations then it will be mentioned as p99 knots if you see the next one as visibility so visibility is reported either in meters that is in india 
or in stretched miles in US. So when the visibility drops to less than 1500 meters and if the transmissometer is available at that aerodrome, the RVR will be issued that is runway visual range. So if you could see in Chennai, visibility is 1200 meters and RVR for runway 25 that is 1300 meters, RVR for runway 07 is 2000 meters in mist. So that is what is RVR, it is the specific visibility in the direction of the takeoff and landing. Whenever visibility is reported as 9999, that means it is greater than 10 kilometers. So if you could see for Singapore, 9999 is mentioned, that means it is greater than 10 kilometers. Excellent visibility. Awesome. So then if you could see for Delhi, visibility is 50 meters. So it's really low and RBR is runway 28. 200 meters RVR for runway 29 is 150 meters in fog. So this is a typical phenomena in the winters in Delhi and in the northern parts of India where the visibility is really really low. So you got to check your crew minima, the aircraft minima and accordingly you have to take a decision whether you can take off or land depending upon your phase of the flight. Then weather. So weather has got a lot of abbreviations. They are in two letter abbreviations. Let's see all of them. Drizzle and it is denoted as DZ. That will make the surface become moist and damp and it will not make the runway surface become reflective. That is drizzle. RA, it stands for rain. When the size of the water droplet is greater than 0.5 millimeter, it will be rain and that will be a precipitation from the continuous sheet of cloud whereas shower is a precipitation from the clouds which are in the breaks. Then SN stands for snow. When the temperature on the ground is less than 0 degrees Celsius then instead of rain there will be snowfall. GR it stands for hail. So when there are CB clouds and there is a thunderstorm activity and temperatures are low then there is hail formation in the CB cloud and whenever the updrafts cannot hold it, it comes down in the form of hail. Then SQ stands for squall. Squall is change of wind suddenly by many knots, sudden increase in wind speed and sudden change in the wind direction that lasts for a few minutes and it will cover a wide area that is squall. GS is a small hail. So the hail size is small that will be GS. SG is snow grain. So that is the snow but it is in a very very small or granular form. PE stands for ice pellets. Then BR is mist. Whenever the visibility reduces to less than 5000 meters up to 1000 meters due to water droplets in the atmosphere then the phenomena is known as mist. Fog. When the visibility reduces to less than 1000 meters due to water droplets in the atmosphere is known as fog. FU stands for smoke. HZ that is haze. So when the visibility reduces to less than 5000 meters to 1000 meters due to presence of smoke particles or dust particles or sand particles. So that is because of any solid particle when the visibility drops then it will be haze. VA stands for volcanic ash. The most dangerous phenomena silica in it is the one which is very very dangerous as well as harmful. So volcanic ash it is denoted by VA. There has been mid-air all engine failure of 747 because of volcanic ash. Then DU that's widespread dust. So dust particles that reduce the visibility significantly that's DU. SA sand. So in Rajasthan whenever the sand is suspended because of the sand storms then the SA will be mentioned. SS sandstorm. When the sandstorm is prevailing at that point of time at the airport, it will be mentioned as SS. Then DS dust storm. Whenever there is a storm and there is no water vapor or moisture content in the atmosphere and there is dust in the atmosphere, then 
the entire dust will be raised up reducing the visibility to even less than 1000 meters and that will be dust storm and there will be adjectives to it so mi stands for shallow if there is a shallow fog then it will be mi bc that is in patches if fog is in patches at different locations at the airport it will be mentioned in bc then dr stands for drifting that means if fog is drifting or if that weather phenomena is drifting or rain is drifting then it will be mentioned as dr then we have either plus or minus sign to indicate the severity of that particular weather then next one is cloud cloud and its layers and the height of those clouds will be mentioned over here and the maximum of three layers will be mentioned fourth layer could be mentioned if there is a cb or cumulonimbus cloud activity is present so if you could see in dhaka there is few clouds at 2500 feet this is all above ground level cb so cumulonimbus cloud is present over there and the weather is uh, thunder showers with rain then if the rest of the layers have to be mentioned the entire sky that you could see is divided in eight parts so octa is what the entire sky that you can see is divided in eight parts so they are octa so out of eight parts whichever parts are filled with the cloud those many octas you can mention so a few means one to two parts of those eight are filled with the cloud that is few then you have scattered which is three to four octa are filled with the cloud that means three to four parts out of eight are filled with the cloud then broken means five to seven parts out of eight are filled with the cloud so only you can see few gaps in between the clouds through which you can see the sky and overcast means you cannot see the sky at all it is completely covered with the cloud so if in case there is absolutely no cloud then it will be mentioned as nsc that is no significant cloud absolutely clear now there are three things if they are combined together then it is mentioned as cav ok that is clouds and visibility ok so whenever clouds are not mentioned separately visibility is not mentioned separately and weather is also not mentioned then if cav ok is mentioned that means you have all the three things visibility more than 10 kilometers there is no cloud below 5000 feet or 1500 meters and there is no weather so when all the three things are combined that will be mentioned as cav ok only when visibility is more than 10 kilometers it will be mentioned as 9999 temperature will be mentioned to the higher integer if it is suppose decimal 5 then it will be mentioned to the next value all right so if the temperature is plus 2.5 it will be mentioned as plus 3 if the temperature is minus 2.5 it will be mentioned as m that is indicates minus 0 2 that because 2 is going to be higher then QNH that will be mentioned in full digit and there will be no decimal it will be rounded off to the lower integer then the last one that's landing forecast or trend forecast that will give you the forecast weather for next two hours and that is required for you to know what is going to be the trend in the next two hours. I hope you have followed this information. If you did understand this then please hit upon like, share and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned for further updates. Thank you for watching this video. Have a lovely day ahead. Bye bye.